Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is one o'clock, and here we are once again inside the Zuniga vehicle here for another edition, a live edition of Pickup Lines. I am Ernie Zuniga. Nice to have you along. Pickup Lines presented by Gomez Law Firm. Remember, Gomez Law fights. They've been fighting for 50 years, starting in 1973, and they've been great supporters of this show, and I thank them for that. Also want to give a shout out to our other sponsors here, Texas Grounds Coffee Company. They're in Holotus. And uh, I've told our guests, I keep a bag of coffee in the car now, just ongoing, because if nothing else, the car smells fantastic. This is Republic, their uh, best-selling brand, and they've got an offer for those of you who watch Pickup Lines and who have supported the show. If you go on their website, Texas Grounds Coffee, right now, well, actually do it after the show. Go online, buy whatever you want, then at checkout, use the promo code PICKUP23, PICKUP23, they will give you a discount on whatever you want to buy. If you want to buy a mug, you want to buy coffee, you want to buy whatever you want. Uh, they have two locations in Holotus, and you can go check them out over there, uh, Texas Grounds Coffee Company. So a shout-out to Phil and Jennifer, and thank you for your ongoing support. All right. Well, uh, listen, uh, it, it doesn't get much more cool than this. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this episode today. By the way, I would ask right now, as we like to start off our show, is to go on to your Facebook page and share this. Just hit share the bottom of the, the page right there. Share it. Grow the audience. Uh, let's make this as big as possible because I think a lot of you are going to want to see what we're doing today. Uh, we're doing something really cool and I feel really spoiled because I am inside the grounds of the San Antonio Zoo. We are here and so without further ado, I want to bring in the man who made this all possible, the CEO, the head honcho, <laughs> the main man himself, Tim Morrow, who has one of the coolest names I've ever seen. Manana in Spanish. It's not a stage name, right? No, that's my real like name. Like you were born with it. Yes. So you're, and I know you're very. I wasn't born with it. I was given it. You were. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. You you are very active on Twitter, and your handle is what Manana Manana Zoo, Zoo which yes. of course is tomorrow, in Spanish. Most people don't get it. They say Manana. Why are you Manana? Manana. <laughs> I hey, can't figure out how to do the enye. Thanks for thanks Thank for you, this. Thanks. You so, know you're parked in the zoo, right? I think I'm illegally parked. Yeah. I feel like this is illegal. What what I'm doing? Like I had a flashback to, and may we never go back to the pandemic again. But when during the pandemic you had the drive through zoo, and I might have been this very vehicle that we literally in this drove spot, through right through this spot, and we went this way. But we're uh, we're in the grounds of the zoo, and the crew here has treated me like royalty. You guys have cleared out a little space for us today in the shade, so thank you for that. Yes. Uh, but I was reading earlier, I think, is it next year you're coming up on 10 years? Yeah. 10 year anniversary? 20, my, I've been here since the December of 2014, which was neat because it was the last month of the first 100 years of the zoo. Yeah. And then January was the first month of the next 100 years of the zoo. So I came right at that, that peak of the centennial. And I read, because I feel like you've done the trifecta. You spent a long time at SeaWorld, Aquatica, that, that yep. property. 19 years. Uh, Fiesta, Texas. Four years. And here at the zoo and I and I read the story too where you were I don't even know that you were looking for a job at the time but was it a headhunter reached out to yes. you 10 years ago I've and said, said no to every job I've ever had including this one <laughs> when they were searching for me but <laughs> they had to ask you more than once yes <laughs> um and at the time you you felt like this was a good project that you could take on and, and do something with it yeah yeah I, I was, this was my zoo as a child and then um I had a child in, in the early 90s who's older now and so we brought him then and then I have younger children now so I've been the demo three times to the zoo and when I came I thought you know all the things I've learned at all the different places I've been I could really apply to this zoo and, and take it to the next level and modernize and make the guest experience great and the animal habitats incredible and we have the best team of any zoo in the country that's making all those things happen here. That is, you bring up a good point because since it's been around for so long, I mean, so many people have experienced this place. But I remember when you came in, I mean, you were talking about paint colors and just the aesthetics. Yeah. And I mean, you obviously know a thing or two about marketing, but but I guess one of your first things was to just change the physical appearance of the zoo. Yeah, the, the zoo was a lot of browns. And the, mm -hmm. that was kind of the theory of the, the zoo of yesterday was the animals are the stars right. and everything else you just blend into a background. But people now want, want more of an experience. So we've been adding color and some thematic elements and you know creating realms of Africa and Australia and and places like that to add that extra layer of guest experience to the visit where you can appreciate the animals. And as we speak, somewhere across the way, construction continues. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> so we have a brand new entrance being yeah. constructed right now that will open this November. And then as soon as that's wrapping up, we start building the most amazing gorilla habitat this country has ever seen and an event space that overlooks the gorillas on the top of the cliff walls. So it's going to be 
take the zoo and the city to the next level. All these things cost money, obviously, and the zoo is a nonprofit. Yes. So how much do you have your fundraising hat on? Now, probably 75, 80% really? of the time I'm fundraising. So we have a great team in place that's operating the zoo and, and doing all those things in all 10 departments that we have. And I'm out fundraising and working with the city. So the city's been incredibly helpful with us with capital projects, like our beautiful zoo parking garage was funded yes. by the city bond. Um, our front gate is being funded by city bond and tours funding. So the city's been incredible to help with us. And then raising money from philanthropists in town and corporations to really help um, get us where we need to go. And so it's a big campaign. It's the biggest one the zoo's ever yeah. done. And we're only in phase one. I mean, we have the other side of 281 to build on still. And so long term, this zoo is going to be completely transformed and we're really excited about it. I love it. So this is Pickup Lines presented by Gomez Law Firm. Tim Morrow is our guest, the CEO of the San Antonio Zoo. And we are on the property today. Uh, as we speak, and you do not like to stay locked up in your office. No, I mean, you like to walk around this the, place. the zoo is my office. <laughs> it's one giant office. Yes, I mean it's really a blessing to work here and be able to get out of a meeting and just go walk the zoo, hear the kids having fun, watch the animals, learn about the animals from our incredible staff, and and then I can go back to a meeting and things like that. But I try to get out and walk the zoo at least once a day and say hi to the staff and guests and yeah. kind of hear what's going on. And that's how you learn and get better. If I were to put you on the spot, do you have a favorite part or favorite? aspect of the zoo yeah it's always so our name tags which i don't have mine on i'm gonna get in trouble if hr is watching but um we have our favorite animal on our name tags yes. and mine has constantly been changing um most recently it was uh jaguar because we did the neotropic area with the pantera walk over the walkways and those just those things uh, now it's gorillas because we're working on designing yeah. this incredible gorilla habitat so i'm learning more about gorillas and their behaviors and things like that so uh, my current favorite part is the construction at the front gate because i love to see construction in progress and Funny story, when I got here, a guest stopped me one of the first couple of weeks or months I was here and said, when is the construction going to be done here? <laughs> and we said, never. You know, we, It's like the Golden Gate Bridge. You're going to get to one end and then start over and yeah. just keep improving. And so I mean, there was a point last year on property where we had 12 construction sites with seven different general contractors working all at the same time on the zoo. So we really work hard to make these improvements and not affect the guest experience at the yes. same time. So I'm on record. If I were to work here and if I had a name tag, I'm on record. I've said this before. Timothy the hippo is my spirit animal. I love love the hippopotamus. He is amazing. He uh, is a character. <laughs> I mean, he, he has his... I mean, like, he, I will watch his videos on Instagram. I will stop in the scroll and watch him. Uh, he's he's one of those animals yes. that, that has that ability. He's a charismatic hippo, and he knows <laughs> it. And so, and Uma, his grandmother, just kind of watches him and just shakes her head. But, you know, he's, got, he's on Twitter. He's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. He has followings from all over the world. He has he makes international news yes. all the time. So he's been a great ambassador for our zoo and our city and our and for hippos. He's really cool and and quite literally cool because he has his own bath, his own pool that's jumping water. everywhere. Uh, don't forget to share the video. A lot of you are doing that, and the audience will, will grow it, and and we're gonna have a lot of fun here. Um, and again, not not to dwell on the pandemic, but I was just reflecting on some of the things just from a marketing perspective when you were trying to keep this place going and you pivoted. You had the drive through zoo. You've done things like name a cockroach at Valentine's Day, stuff to raise funds, make national news, and keep this thing going. Yeah. I, I mean, how, where does that all come from? We have a very creative team. You know, we we our, our philosophy here is kind of, you know, take care of the, the staff first. We are a family. We take care of each other. And then in return, they will take care of the guests that way. Right. And everything we do is fun at our core. So we know that people visit the zoo to have fun, first and foremost. And then we're going to take that time to educate them while they're here. We know that people come to work at the zoo because they think it would be fun to right. work at the zoo. So let's keep that. And so what we do is fun. And we, you know, we call ourselves the Savage Zoo on, you know, in, on Twitter sometimes because we've gone after Kawhi a few times. Some other people that have done San Antonio dirty. But oh, yeah, uh, yeah. we just have fun with what we do. And I think it really resonates with people. And you look at our, I think our social reach last year was 4 billion people. Billion. From San Antonio Zoo. And so it's big. And it, but it's fun. And so it resonates with people. How do you compete now? Because even just in the 10 years, almost 10 years that you've been here, the way that social media has changed, the other theme parks are, are adding stuff and, and bringing stuff in. How do you compete with that and, and keep everything fresh? You know, San Antonio is a, a great market to be in because, you know, nearly 40 million visitors a year. But it's also challenging because we're one of the few cities in the country with two major theme parks. We've got SeaWorld and Six Flags, both incredible. We've got the Alamo. Let's go through a major transformation. Yes, We've yes. got the Riverwalk, the Caverns, the Missions. So there's a lot of competition for time and attention of visitors and pe locals. Right. So we, the social we do also keeps us top of mind for visitors to come see us. And Indeed. and we're not part of a corporation right. or too serious as maybe a Alamo has to be sometimes. Sure, I get so it, I get it. we can have fun. We're a fun place and so we want to have fun.
So on that <laughs> subject, obviously the animals are the stars of the show, and we're going to make some pickup lines history here because never in the history of the show have we had anything or anybody in the back seat. So uh, we're going to go ahead and bring on, and you can do the introduction here because I have no idea what's coming in other than <laughs> that it's not a there's, snake. There's a well, I come I, on I, in. It, it could be. <laughs> um, come on in. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So this is Brooke, by the way, one of your, is it anim, uh, animal ambassadors? or? Yes. Uh, and I see you have not come empty handed. I have not. This is the cutest little animal on the planet. This is, is it. it? It is. <laughs> Why are you scooting that no, way? No, no, no. What's, what's I wanna, going on? What is the animal's name? So this is Greta. Because I want to give Greta uh, plenty of time on the camera here. Yeah, so Greta deserves all of the camera time. So this is a 20-year-old, three-banded armadillo. And there's 20 species of armadillo. 20? 20 different species of armadillo. But there's only one that is actually native to the United States. And what is it, Ernie? Greta. No. No. It's a nine-banded armadillo. A nine, of course. The so nine-banded. How did you not know that? Yeah, right? <laughs> I was going to so, say eight-banded. Yeah. So Greta is a three-banded, and she is native to South America. And so this is not, even though she's teeny tiny, she's actually not the smallest armadillo species. She's the second smallest. The smallest is, ready for this? Yes. It's a pink fairy armadillo. Get out. That You're making that up. I swear it. Can okay. I have one? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so can you explain to the lay people like myself, yeah. why is Greta balled up? Is she, is she offended by me? Or why, why is she balled up right now? And, and well, what's is, happening here? Okay, so this is, this is how Greta feels comfortable. Oh. So this is the only species out of the 20 that can curl up into a ball. So in fact, armadillos are the only mammal on the planet that have a shell. And when I say shell, you're probably thinking turtle shell turtle. or an ocean shell. This is a different type of shell. So this shell is made up of bony plates. Can I touch? And, yeah, Can I right touch? there, right on top. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and then. <laughs> I mean, I believed you. It's <laughs> not as bad okay. as you thought it was no. going to be. <laughs> and then it's covered. So you, when you felt that, you probably said, huh, that doesn't feel very bony. Well, that's because it has a thick skin on top which is made out of keratin, but you'll see. So she forms herself in a perfect little ball, just like this. How long will she stay like that? She can stay like this for hours, but here's an, <laughs> okay, so here's something really cool. So she's teeny tiny, right? Okay. Um, now, if say Greta was in South America and a large cat- Jaguar. Okay. My old favorite animal. Okay. Jaguar, you yeah. got it, Tim. <laughs> a large cat. Jaguar. Okay, a jaguar. A jaguar. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. So say that she felt threatened. Yes. What she's going to do is she's going to curl up. So you see how there's this little gap right yes. here? Well, that's what I like to call the mouse trap. So what's going to happen is that cat's going to come up and it's going to put its nose or it's going to put a finger right here no. in the mouse trap. And then what she's going to do is she's going to say, not today. And she's going to crunch down and she can actually break a digit or pinch so hard on the lip of the jaguar. And <laughs> that jaguar is no longer going to want to consider her like as a lunch Man. option. I got to walk a walk a walk a walk. <laughs> I didn't think about calling it. Pac that That'd is be really crazy. Good. Yeah. And so, so she, even though she can't see very well, she definitely can hear very well. And she can hear insects six inches under the ground. Incredible, right? And so what she does is she uses her little... I've never seen Ernie speechless before, and it's over right. and over. It doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> but take a look. Everyone, can you see her So the little, like, front? The yeah, little claws. claws or talons yeah. or... I mean, those... Yeah. I it's wouldn't want to upset... <laughs> like a velociraptor. I don't know what is it. Look at... I would not want to upset Greta. Let's put it My that way. My zoologist's heart is yeah. sinking right yes, now. I apologize. Yes, I apologize. so these are claws. More time at the so zoo or anymore. I need to be in So yes. close. But these can rip up termite mounds and ant mounds. Dig. And so they're so valuable and crucial to ecosystems and helping control insect populations. And a lot of, you know, every time we bring out the armadillo, everybody has an armadillo story. 
everybody has one. But nine everybody, banded armadillos. Nine banded armadillos. Yeah, not the three banded. Not yeah, the three just, banded, the, just the nine. Everybody the nine. has a nine banded ar armadillo story, but they're so important, and you really don't get to understand the personalities until you meet one of our ambassador animals here. And that's where Brooke, Brooke yeah. comes in just to quite literally do what you just have done is educate people like that's myself right. who think right. that these are talons. Well, <laughs> Ernie, it's all about empathy and building empathy yes and so without providing opportunities for empathetic connections with our animals it's sometimes a challenge for people to want to care about wildlife and wild places it. as well as protecting the species in a whole that is so cool. so that's why the ambassador program is so important here at san antonio zoo so one of the many great things that that is offered here how what's life expectancy for Greta how much how long will she it's be with only us 16 years what and what did I how old did you I said say she's she 20 was? I did say that she was 20 and that is because of the incredible care that they receive here at San Antonio there Zoo which is a top-notch facility I love it yep well thank you so much for spending some time with yeah. us this, I wish I could just take her with me and put just her put pocket. her right here and just you know, <laughs> in the cup holder. Tim would frown upon that. <laughs> okay. Well, She's very portable and convenient, too. She is, and it's lunchtime. So yes. We have oh, some well. well, we have some insects to eat. Okay. Yeah. Good to see you, Brooke. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Oh, my goodness. Okay. There is Pickup Lines history. We have not only Brooke, but, uh, I mean, how often does cool stuff like that happen? Here all the time. You get reactions like my reaction. Obviously, I didn't know that was going to happen. Children and adults and staff. Like every time we're in the zoo, we're all learning something. I bet I knew none of that. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so people will text me all the time or send me pictures like, what is this animal? Right. What is this snake? I'm like, no idea. But I'll send it to my experts. Yeah. And then I send back the answer and I look super and smart. You look so that's, like part a of my, that's part of my disguise. So. Um, that, that's, that's pretty cool stuff. Um, so getting back to uh, the construction and everything when will it all be open or, or I mean obviously this everything is still open yeah normal zoo's zoo. open we have actually uh, you come in two different places one through Kitty Park and one up closer to the parking garage yeah. so we're trying to make it really easy for guests to experience the zoo and not have that pain point of where's the front gate um, that will open this November um, Gorilla and the event center will open the first part of 2025 so right. we're really it sounds like it's far away but we know it's going to come really fast and so we're really really excited about that did i read somewhere that you had once considered a career in the fbi yes because so you look <laughs> yes. like i could see you with the earpiece yeah and the security suit. i could the security see you guy out here watching i could see you as an undercover yeah my you dad might, you might be an undercover agent yeah, right now no no you never know <laughs> um my dad was an fbi agent so that's what i wanted to do okay. and i came to i went to high school up in dallas and then i came back to san antonio to go to the school at sac so i got two degrees in criminal justice at sac and that's when I was working on the, at Six Flags in the summers. And every summer I was like, I don't want to come back. This is not what I want to do. And I kept going back. Right, right. And then I was got my two degrees from SAC. I was rotating over to UTSA to get my uh, degree in sociology. Yeah. And SeaWorld called me and said, hey, we want you to come work at SeaWorld. I said, nope, it's too far. Yeah. That's when SeaWorld was the only right. thing on the west side. Way that and a McDonald's. And that was it. <laughs> and if people remember, they remember. Yes. Yeah, for um, sure. And, so, and then I ended up at SeaWorld 19 years, two years of those and. um Orlando, then I came back. But yeah, I always wanted to do law enforcement because that's what my dad did. Yeah. I grew up watching him have cars with that's lights so cool. and all these things and, and yeah. guns. We've had fun <laughs> over the years talking about one animal in particular, and that's the snake. Because I was saying that I, you know, just ever since I was a kid, I was not a huge fan of snakes. And watching Indiana Jones, uh, or Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, probably didn't help. Mm -hmm. um, but you, in a very nice, respectful way, you know, pointed out to me, I think on Twitter a few years ago, that, that snakes have very meaningful... Uh, are, are very meaningful and, and can do very good things and are yeah. very important. Yeah, they are very important to the ecosystem. Like Brooke was talking about the anti the anteater, the uh, armadillo <laughs> eating uh, insects. The, right. the snakes do the same thing for pest control for us too. If we didn't have snakes, we'd be overrun by rats and mice and everything else yeah. you have around your house. So yeah. uh, there's good snakes and then there's venomous snakes, which are not bad snakes. It's just leave them alone. Leave, leave them, them all alone. alone. And right. so, I mean, if you look at the, the medicines we have in modern medicine, they a lot of them were derived from animals and plants in the wild. So another reason to protect the wild and the yeah. and the plants that we have on this planet because we're losing the ability to create medicines. But uh, like a copperhead snake, they're studying those now to cure breast cancer. The the the, the semaglutide that people are taking now for weight loss comes from the the venom of a Gila monster. And so you think of all the, you can go through your whole medicine cabinet and right. they all probably come from animal. Um, you know, venom or venom, whatever, whatever part of it, that, that body benefits, fluid, yes, whatever some kind of fluids, the part part of this. Um, yeah. So it's a big part of that. But snakes are important, and I'm devastated when I see 
someone post a picture of the snake that they killed, like they're proud they cut the head off some snake. So in most cases, just leave it alone or call an expert to come handle it and things like that. But I think a lot of times it's 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 like a coral snake yep. or or yep. a rattlesnake. Yes. And and I guess if so, if you were to talk to those people and they were to see one, you at home or, or yeah. whatever in the neighborhood you would tell them to do what yeah just leave it alone if it's not it's it's more afraid of you than you are of it <laughs> which people have a hard time believing. you yeah. think about it fearing snakes is a learned behavior we learn that like we talk about the movie right the sharks with jaws, jaws. terrified a whole generation um but then Pee Wee brought it all back Pee Wee Herman when Look he saved all those snakes out of the pet store so i was very proud of Pee Wee. you posted that yes. the other day when We're he passed saving away saving those snakes and reminding us that every species matters so um if it's in your house or in your garage or something there's people that will come get it out for you that are professionals at, at managing those snakes and so okay. they are very important to the environment and to what we do so we have a few more minutes here um with tim morrow the ceo of the san antonio zoo and i don't know if we have time for another i mean that greta will be tough to top but maybe we have time for one more guest here in a moment. Um, best thing that's ever happened, uh, celebrity guests or cool things, something unexpected that happened here at the zoo? Sure. The best thing that's ever happened to me here at the zoo was in 2021, coming out of COVID, you know, we were closed. We had no income. Uh, we created the drive through zoo, which went across the world. We yeah. gave that to zoos and theme parks across the world, and they took it and ran with it. Um, all of our staff took pay cuts yes. or hour reductions. Uh, and then we came back pretty strong in the fourth quarter at Holiday Lights for Zoo Lights. Had a strong spring in 21 mm -hmm. because people thought it was comfortable coming to an outdoor attraction. So the greatest thing that's ever happened to me was to be able to surprise our entire staff and pay them back all the money they had given up to to literally for this zoo to survive and still be here in San Antonio. That was the greatest day I've ever had at work. And so we have had celebrities, you know, Tony Parker's on our board and yeah. all the Spurs come out and movie stars have come out and just incredible things here happen every day. Births, incredible births happen every day. We, yeah. have, a, we have a pregnant Okapi that we are on birth watch for the, any day now. So those are really super exciting things. But to me, the staff is just so incredible and passionate here, as you saw when they're talking yes. about our armadillo, that to, to be able to pay them all back and thank them for literally saving our community zoo uh, was just something I can't describe and I'll never be able to describe. I it. had a feeling you were going to say that because I remember that day, I think you had a ceremony or something and you, yes, hand, we you surprised handed them. out checks. It was tacos with Tim. They had no idea what was coming. Oh. <laughs> and so, um, the, you know, the rumors are like, there's going to be layoffs because we had oh seen all the other theme parks yeah. and zoos yeah. laying off people and hospitality in general was the hardest hit. Oh, they're announcing a new something or right. that. So, and then I realized real quick, we were going to just surprise them and send checks in and, and then have the meeting. But yeah. we realized, you know, it's 2021 20, 20 at this point. They're yeah. going to get a notification of a deposit. So that won't work. So oh, yeah. I just wrote them all a letter, yeah. uh, a letter, you know, thanking them for what, what they sacrificed for the zoo and for the animals in this community. And But that was the greatest day of all time. And the looks on their faces. Oh. Some of those looks we captured on video. Yeah. Jaws on the ground. and. And they weren't asking for money back. Oh, sure, no. no they no. knew the cause. They knew it was for the animals and for our zoo. But that was a blessed day to be able to do that. Well, them. listen, that speaks to your leadership and what you've done here. I'm getting word that we have time for one more guest right. here. So let's see. It's a lion. Come on in. I, the, the lion, do we have enough? I think we have time for one more. All right, come on in. We have, we'll have. we put the seat back for the lion. You know, the leather's not, the leather's strong, right? <laughs> well, I hope so. We're, we're going to find out here. Um, so we have another ambassador here, <laughs> Kristen, right? Christine. Christine. Hi, Christine. But more importantly, this is That's not a lion. Baby. It's not. I was lying. Yeah. <laughs> I said lying, not lion. A lion. <laughs> lion. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. So what, what, I, obviously it's a snake. What kind of snake it do we is. have here? She is a Kenyan sand boa. Okay. So this was actually... I know a lot of people don't necessarily like snakes a whole lot. But I'm coming around. Here, let me hold her up a little bit closer so that everybody can get a better look. She <laughs> is a smaller snake, yeah. but she is absolutely beautiful. And this is actually the very first snake, uh, not Nairobi personally, but this species was the first snake that I ever touched. Because when I was a kid, I was super afraid of snakes. And I went to a zoo and they had an ambassador snake like Nairobi here. And it was a little sand boa and it was the first one that I uh, actually got to go up close and personal with and actually got to touch because honestly, like I realize that she's probably hard to see on the camera, but you can see her very well right here. Mm -hmm. She looks like what a kid would make if you asked them to make a snake out of Play-Doh. She's like, very she's cute. I'll give you that. This <laughs> she's long, very cute. 
That's my thing about body. snake cerny's that I've learned here is they are beautiful. If you take the time to go through yeah. the reptile house and look at the snakes and their coloring and patterns, I mean, there are some beautiful snakes. No, I always snakes. do. Yeah. I, I will say I always go to the reptile house because for that reason, you, yeah. I mean, just to see them. And we, we were talking, I was telling Tim about how I'm trying to come around to snakes and, and kind of the value they bring, the beauty they bring, and that they're more scared of us than we are of them. Absolutely. They are much more uh, kind of... They're going to try to run away mm -hmm. first. That is going to be their first instinct. Um, they don't have arms. They don't have legs. They can't really fight back. So their first instinct is going to be to run. But little Nairobi here, the Kenyan sand boas are fascinating because they actually they burrow under the ground. Uh -huh. So you can see her eyes and her nostrils are right up at the top of her head, which gives her a very cute, slightly derpy expression, which is why I always <laughs> think like this looks like looks like the kind of animals like I would have drawn as a kid like just you'd be like mm, that's not quite right but with the sand right. it is so those <laughs> eyes and nostrils being right up at the top of her head is gonna let her burrow underground and then stick just the very top of her head out to watch and so they're gonna be an ambush hunter and she'll blend right in uh-huh so she's gonna bury herself down just that cute little face sticking yeah, I'll up. Her up to the camera. And then if a mouse or something goes past, she's going to be able to just dart out and grab onto it. So she's non-venomous. She is just a little tiny constrictor, but she's got a little shovel-shaped face, eyes and nose right at the very top just for sticking out of the sand. And I think it's the cutest little snake face ever. I got to give you that. I, I got to give you that. Um, it's How much bigger will she get? She's pretty much full grown. Is she really? Okay. Mm-hmm. So for the Kenyan sand boas, the females do get to be larger than the males, but it's still only about two to two and a half feet long. So not that big. And no. she, what will she, what is her diet? Mostly mice. Okay. So in the wild, because they are ambush hunters, they're not going to be too picky about what they go after. It's whatever happens to walk by. So they'll also catch, you know, lizards, maybe even occasionally a bird, but it's mostly going to be those small rodents. Just fascinating stuff. Do you, you want to hold it, Ernie? Am, am I allowed to? I mean, this is a big, this is a big deal. Your tint is this maybe is... <laughs> not legal, so yes. This is... Go ahead and just like, just like this. nice and flat, because since she is a burrowing snake, she doesn't necessarily hold on. And I still have her head so up proud here. So proud of you, Ernie. Okay, okay. So you don't have to worry about anything. You're just okay. holding on to the back end. This is a big deal, Tim. I know. It's a big moment. So, uh, but it feels pretty cool, right? No, I, I, listen, you can't. You cannot deny that the, the 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 feeling. She's a beautiful snake. There's definitely like a, just a cool factor. And so her scales made out of the same stuff as our fingernails. So it's all keratin. Keratin, yeah. So those scales that are kind of flat against your hand, okay. those ventral scales, you can feel those are really smooth, yeah, like yeah, yeah. our fingernails. And then that upper part that you were just touching is a little bit like bumpier, a little yeah. bit rougher, and that's to give her more traction when she's burrowing. So she's got those rougher scales there to actually help her when she's burrowing. So different snakes are going to have slightly different feelings yeah. depending on where they are adapted for living. I love it. I love it. I could do this all day, but I know you have to get to work <laughs> and uh, do your thing. So this is uh, such a great experience. Thank you so much for being here. Of we appreciate course. it. Thank you. Have okay. a great day. You too. All right. This is like life event on your Facebook page, like held the snake. How did I do? <laughs> great. Didn't okay. drop it. Okay. Well, nice. no, I didn't want it. Cause, you know, if you're really... <laughs> then it's my car. I mean, I... <laughs> then what are we going to do? Snakes in a car. Uh, that, yeah, yeah. A um, couple more minutes with Tim Morrow here, the CEO. This has been quite a treat here. And um, Moldorama, my only request is that I don't care what construction, what growth, I don't care what else you do, just do not get rid of Moldorama. I've had my life threatened that if <laughs> Moldorama ever leaves, that they will come after, people will come after me. So no, yes. Moldorama won't go anywhere. We're actually trying to get some more. Um, they on still the, make those? On the machines. Kind of. There's, okay. It's kind of a family-owned business, yeah. and they're in maintenance mode, and we're trying to push them a little bit more to do some more things and things like that. But a great. I was just telling someone yesterday that had not seen that machine before. I'm like, yeah. this, this is an emotional experience for people. Absolutely. I said, you can sit at the machine and watch all day, and everyone does the same thing. They put their money in. They're all excited. It says, wait one minute before up. Nobody waits. They get it out. <laughs> they kind of. And then they hand it to everyone to feel how warm it is, and then they all smell it. Smell it. it smell it every time and we they have, last forever no listen true story <laughs> right now we have we got some at christmas when we were here last holiday season and we have the santa and the christmas tree i think it's on display right now at my yeah. house still <laughs> it's the original th for 3d printer 
It really is. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Well, listen, um, we're coming up to the bottom of the hour here. Uh, any final thoughts or anything you'd like the people to know? I mean, I think everybody watching has had some kind of experience. Sure. Uh, like you said, this is a generational place. Yes. Um, what departing message would you like to impart? I would say, impart? you know, come visit, support the zoo. We have a lot of cool opportunities right now with cool zones and water wars with squirt guns and all keep kinds of things to help keep you cool at Plenty the zoo. of shade. I mean, we're shaded right yeah. now. So great zoo, world-class zoo. We're really proud of it. Great things coming. Um, already great with a lot. We've yeah. probably put $100 million into this zoo in the last eight, nine years. And so if you haven't been in a while, those are my favorite people that come because they're like, wow, it's fully changed. But I still see the zoo that I've always known. So yeah. we really work hard to respect the history while we forge a new future. And then I just want to thank you personally for all the support you have always given thank the zoo. You. Thank you. Everywhere you've been and, and the things that you've said and done for us. I mean, it, I can't tell you how it's help, been helpful for us for you to tell help tell our stories to the public. So. Well, I would, listen, I mean, I've got memories here and we didn't even talk about the kitty park and the train and everything. We'll do that next time. Four-hour show. But uh, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I'm happy to do it. Uh, it's an honor to have you here. You thanks for your thanks hospitality. Thanks for having me, always. Tim Morrow, the great CEO, coming up on 10 years. Let me be the first to congratulate you. you on that here. And here's to many, many more years of success. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. This has been Pickup Lines presented by Gomez Law Firm inside this great San Antonio Zoo. <laughs> we will see you next time. And don't forget to follow Tim on Twitter at... Manana Zoo. Manana Zoo. Okay. Take care. Until next time. Well, I got to turn this off now. That's the, that, or else <laughs>